HEB virtual cooking class. We are so excited you are here to join us tonight. We have so much in store for you. Tonight is all about our kind of fall baking kickoff. It's all about baking. It's all about the holidays coming up. Do you realize that we are about a month out from one of the biggest food holidays uh, ever, the Thanksgiving holiday with all that goes along with it. So uh, all the baking, all the stuff, it's time to put on your stretchy pants. We got a lot going on. I should have just done half of the agenda that we did. As you can see, if you're joining us live on Zoom, that we have a full, uh, full plate in front of us. One or two of these things would have been completely fine for an entire class. We got ambitious. In order to be ambitious, you gotta have the right sidekick moderator to help you through this whole thing. So Charlotte Samuel is off today. We searched the globe far and wide and found the one and only Jennifer Oye, who actually also an HEB partner. Jen Oye, would you introduce yourself and tell people what would you say you do here at <laughs> Of course, Tompkins, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited <clears throat> to be here. Uh, I've been with HEB for about eight years now. Right. Uh, do a little bit of this, a little bit of that uh, right. here at the HEB Culinary Center. It's top secret, that's why you can't tell It us is, exactly yeah, a little product do. development, a uh, little recipe development, and a little behind the scenes action. A little um, behind the scenes, that's exactly right. She helps the wheels turn and you'll uh, recognize her work if you ever pick up a meal, simple meal. Uh, a lot of the great chefs, myself included, uh, take part in all that great stuff. So many good things. Jen, I'm glad you're here. Saddle up now, Jen is gonna do her best Charlotte Samuel impersonator, uh, impersonation, I should say, uh, to do her best. Uh, Jen's a little quiet though, so we're gonna make sure, we're gonna poke Jen a lot today, because we're gonna get her, uh, her talking and rapping. So any questions you have, Jen will be the one helping out in the chat, you can, you can talk to me. Uh, those of you joining us on Facebook, don't forget, uh, first of all, welcome. You, uh, when you see items you see that, we're, that I'm cooking with today, don't forget you can click on those items. They'll take you right to where you can shop them and you can cook along with me or get those in your basket for checkout. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, welcome. And those of you that signed up for the class on Zoom, welcome. We're so excited you're here. Uh, full agenda. Uh, we're gonna start with um, the pumpkin pie cheesecake with pepita toffee crumble. Full stop. That could have been a class all on its own. We could dedicate the entire hour to doing just that, but we're not, we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna do that. And while I'm doing that, because we're gonna get ambitious, I'm gonna make the brown sugar banana bread. Uh, I don't know if you know this, um, as we were coming uh, into the pandemic, when the pandemic was kind of fully fully uh, revving up, uh, a lot of great recipes that were taking off during that time, because I think uh, you know it's comforting to be able to bake, it's comforting to do those things. And so ban uh, banana bread was one of the things that was like top of the list, it was up 12,000% year over year or something like that. It was one of those uh, pandemic things that we learned to make bread. We made banana bread. We're going to show you our recipe for a little brown sugar banana bread. It's really, really good using some unconventional baking items, but it's a great one. And we're, gonna, we're not going to stop there. We're going to make a, uh, because we have the quintessential kind of pumpkin pie we're doing our version of, now we're going to do the uh, sticky toffee pecan pie, which is going to be really fun. I'm, I'm excited to show you because we're going to make it in a blender. You're like, what? Mind blown. Yeah, it's going to go in a blender and it's going to be a lot of fun. I have one mixer. So I'm gonna show you how to adapt with only one thing because again, we're, we're getting ambitious. And to finish everything off, to go along with our uh, sticky toffee pecan pie, Jen Oye, we have a chai chantilly. I'm really excited to show you this really cool technique. I'm excited to share some great baking hacks. And I'm excited, we're gonna make a little malted chocolate whipped cream as well. It's all about kind of kicking up for the holidays. We are here to help. And as always, if you find yourself overwhelmed, the holidays are coming up, you know, don't forget, you can always go to HEB, pick up your pecan pies, your cheesecakes, and the big, big holiday versions. They're all there. Anything you need, everything in store. All right, let's get started. Jen, we're going to start with the pumpkin pie cheesecake. That's right. And yep. I'm going to show you something because my friends, I don't know, Rob, if you can see this, our ginormous pumpkin that's kind of off camera here. We have a beautiful uh, sweet hazel pumpkin. Now, if you want to get ambitious, I'm all for going completely ambitious for the holidays. Uh, if you want to make your, all your pie doughs from scratch, you want to do the, the pumpkin from scratch. Now, obviously, we have plenty of our fantastic canned pumpkin. You probably see it right now. We're gearing up. If you're local HEB, we're getting So I've got a little organic pumpkin. That's what the recipe calls for. If you find yourself going, you know what? I want to cook with a pumpkin. I want to get ambitious. I want to do it. I'm going to tell you it's fantastic, and it looks really, really cool. Check this out. This is the same sweet hazel pumpkin. The meat of this pumpkin is really, really sweet. It's really, really good. You can see, um, I may have forgotten this in the oven after an hour. It's a hour. little dark there, Tom. It's a little, but you know, I mean, it's, you know, okay, caramelization is flavor, right? I want to give you my, my best trick for this. If you are going to roast a pumpkin like the sweet hazel, uh, if you know if you've done pumpkin carving or anything like that, when you cut open a pumpkin, trying to get those seeds out, you need that super scoop with the teeth to try and get everything out. 
Don't try to take them out because it's really, really fibrous. Roast them, and then once you roast, you can see how it's kind of scraped. I want to show you this. It comes out so much easier when it's cooked. I don't know if you can see that. I can just scoop the seeds right out versus kind of like having to really fight. But look how this is just, there it goes, that easy. Now all this is what I put into here. Now can you really tell them apart? Not really. But if you, again, if you want to go ambitious, our friends in produce have some great things. And uh, I'm going to use the fresh pumpkin because I have it. So I'm using about 15 ounces, same thing. One can of pumpkin, 15 ounces. This is going to go in our stand mixer. Now I've got the whip attachment here. So pumpkin's going to go in. That's our fresh pumpkin. Mascarpone cheese, or mascarpone cheese, however you like to say it. Uh, really fatty. My favorite way to make cheesecake, don't get freaked out, don't get grossed out. Uh, I love to add goat cheese to my cheesecake. Reason being, if you're not a goat cheese fan, you're like, gross, you lost me, I'm out. Just stick with me. Because uh, goat cheese, if you've ever had it, just plain goat cheese, has a really sharp tanginess. And with cream cheese, which kind of has that, you know, very light kind of tanginess, it really gives your cheesecake like a whole other dimension of flavor, which I love. So I kind of like that in there. The mascarpone, though, because we're making a pumpkin pie cheesecake, I want the mascarpone to kind of give us another element of fat without adding, Jen, too much of that cheesy flavor. Mascarpone, of course, famous for uh, you make tiramisu. Um, I love to whip it and add a little, uh, just like you would whipped cream, whip mascarpone instead, a little vanilla bean, a little bit of uh, powdered sugar and whip it together. It's real thick and it works really, really deliciously on most desserts. Again, it's a little tang, but mostly just that good fat. All right, cream cheese inside the mixer here. Now you could absolutely, if you're trying to build up your forearm muscles, you can do this by hand for sure. And I'm gonna do a lot of that later on when I whisk my whipped cream because I'm gonna try to uh, save my mixer here for what it's doing. So everything's gonna go in this recipe. Now you can, uh, you can kind of add this in stages if you want, but I like to, to create especially when it comes to baking, recipes that are less fussy. There's nothing worse than like trying to, you want to do something, you set out to do it, and you're like, I, I can't do all the different steps and whatever. So I try to make it a little bit easier, and this recipe completely works by everything going all in. It's the all in method. Just everything goes in, the, in there at one time. Tompkins, speaking yes. of going all in, if you did want to add all in. goat, <laughs> goat <laughs> if you cheese. did want to add goat cheese, yeah. how, much, how much would that be? Uh, is somebody asking that question? Um, yeah, it's my what? first one. I'm very excited. Okay, check this out. This is what you want to add. You could do this exact same recipe, omit the pumpkin pie spice, keep the amount of eggs of vanilla, and add one of the HEB logs, which I think is about four ounces. That's really all you need to really spice it up and then keep the same everything. Don't put the pumpkin in because it'll throw everything off, but you can do just that. It won't make as much, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to talk a little bit about volume. I'm a little crazy about during the holidays. Put on your stretchy pants. We're going to make a couple extra pies. The recipes are going to call for that. That's just the way we're going to do it. Um, okay, caster sugar. Now, what is caster sugar? Caster sugar is just a finer granulated sugar. It looks like this. Now, full disclosure. You can see that, Rob. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Uh, not every store will have this. You can absolutely, a thousand percent, just use regular granulated sugar. However, the reason why I like to use, there's a hole in this one. Can you believe that? I was walking around the store with this probably going somewhere. Oh my, I feel, I feel terrible now. I probably did this. Uh, the reason why I like caster sugar is in any application, whether you're making cookies, uh, pies, whether you're making cakes or muffins, whatever, it's a real fine granulated sugar and it just creates a finer texture and it blends a little faster in the creaming method when you're creaming it. If you want to make your own caster sugar, totally fine as well. I'm going to tell you how to do that. Take two cups of just regular granulated sugar, throw it in a food processor and just blitz it up for about uh, maybe 60 seconds, 30 seconds, until it's a little bit finer. Um, you're not going to make powdered sugar. If you want to go a little longer, you'd have to add a little cornstarch and then kind of blitz it a little bit longer to get it finer. But just a few turns in that just to get a little bit smaller. You don't have to do that. I just like to do that. Okay, that's everything, right, Jen? Did that's I miss anything? My vanilla extract is in my eggs. That's the last thing I'm going to Oh, I got to add our, uh, I add the pumpkin. We're good. That's yep. everything. All right, I'm going to turn this on. And while this is mixing, you're going to see that from the top. I'm going to wait until this starts going here. You gotta love cheesecake. The reason why I love cheesecake is anytime I can use my whisk attachment, Jen, for my mixer, I love it because it just creates that smooth texture and we're adding a lot of air to this. Um, oh, I forgot my molasses. Ah, uh, that's my I bad. It was there Sorry. I walked by it. All right, here's a hack for this. I wanna show you one a quick hack. Anytime you're using really sticky stuff, honey, corn syrup, whatever it is, I, little nonstick spray on a tablespoon will just help it to release a little bit better. You, if you don't like molasses, try the recipe first. Whoa, too much, here we go. This will help it just come off a little bit cleaner. 
Nothing worse than trying to base, you know, trying to scrape it out with your fingers. I want you, I want to show you this. You ready for it, Rob? Overhead, overhead cam here. I'm going to show you how much of the molasses comes out when we spray it. So come on, look at that. Right? Look how much cleaner that is. So just save yourself the trouble. Of course, I still have molasses on my fingers. That'll translate to me later on tonight. I'll be like doing something. I'll be like, when you like, what's on my face? That's assuming I don't wash my hands, which I will, of course. All right, I'm gonna give us a scrape down. Don't ever forget, whenever you're mixing something, especially like in a stand mixer, make sure you just uh, mix it down. Stuff gets stuck, like my spice right now is all stuck around the sides. Just give it a quick, you know, un unsticking here. And then we'll, uh, we're gonna turn this up to about four. It's about medium on a 10 speed mixer here, I'll, just about. All right, brown sugar banana bread. So since I have one mixer, you'll notice in your recipe, your banana bread is done in a mixer with a paddle attachment since my mixer is going because I got super ambitious uh, and decided to make all this stuff at one time, Jen. Why did you let me? Well, you do don't that? do anything halfway, do you, Tompkins? You know, uh, I gotta be honest. I knew that Jen, if I got myself in a pickle, Jen's gonna jump in here <laughs> and she's gonna get me out of it because that's what she does. That's part of her top secret job is she unsticks things as things get sticky. <laughs> uh, all right, so I've got some brown sugar. So we're gonna do what's called the muffin method. So the muffin method is dry goes in one, wet goes in the other. Now. The one thing I'm using for this is, I'm actually gonna add the brown sugar to the wet because I wanna kind of get it a little more, a little more creamy and emulsified, but all my dry go in. So I've got baking powder, baking soda, salt. Two teaspoons baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda, about a teaspoon of salt. I got my sour cream here. Wait, hang on, I'm not gonna use the same spatula. You thought I was, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna use the same spatula. Sour cream. So the one big difference about this banana bread that I really like when I was creating this recipe, to me, I'm not a conventional baker. I kind of like to defy some of the odds of things that should like fit together and should not fit together. And I really like um, adding a lot more fat to things than I think you should. Um, you're welcome. I like the buttermilk in here. I like the sour cream because I want to give it these extra notes of flavor. Um, there's also, you'll see in the recipe, I'm gonna add the eggs and vanilla. Everything's gonna go all in together. It's the muffin method. And then my melted butter, about six ounces melted butter. Woo, look at all that butter. That was eight ounces of butter. So I had a little more because... A little we're, extra we're, love. We're going big. <laughs> um, but six ounces of butter is all the recipe calls for. Um, everything goes all in because it's so much easier to do. We talk about layering flavors, Jen. The, uh, the thing I love about this, you see my mixer over here? See, it's just getting a little more whipped. I'm gonna give it one more scrape down as I'm talking. I like doing the muffin method because the muffin method is a little bit easier and it's also gonna develop less gluten. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. So the developing of gluten Obviously, when we're making the banana bread in the mixer uh, with a paddle attachment, we're gonna develop a little gluten. Well, the fat's gonna help insulate gluten development. So if we have a lot of butter, which we do, we have the sour cream, we have the buttermilk, like all these things have a good amount of fat in them and it's gonna help kind of insulate us from having this brick of, you know, quick bread, which nobody wants a brick of quick bread. All right, because I sprayed out my molasses spoon, look how clean that is, I'm gonna give it a quick wipe and it's ready to use again. Instead of I love to, like, this recipe, Tompkins. This is probably my favorite banana bread recipe. I use this one Really? Yeah. Are you just you, saying that because you're here? Well, I mean, it could be. You'll never know. <laughs> but I do leave right out the malted milk powder. So that is exactly right. So Chef Jen just said it. So that's the secret ingredient. Now, the reason why you'd have to make it both ways, I think, and I think Jen would tell you, you have to make it both ways to try it because malted milk powder, there's a lot of malted milk powder in what we're doing today. And the reason why I love to use malted milk in some of these recipes is it completely gives it just another layer of flavor of this like you can't describe it but if it wasn't there you would totally miss out on it um, what's also good is if you were going to leave this banana bread to kind of sit overnight um, you could to kind of develop a little more flavor that it kind of allows the glutens and everything to kind of relax and you could bake it off you'll get more flavor out of that i actually add malted milk powder when i make brioche sometimes because it just gives it another layer of this flavor that you can't explain but if it's not there you're like ah there's just something missing okay Here's the ingredients. I've missed my dry up real quick. I'm just gonna whisk this together here. Now, the thing that'll help you in baking is if all your ingredients are the same temperature. So if I added cold butter, or if I added the hot butter that I just melted in the microwave to the cold eggs and the cold cream and everything, you're gonna get those little butter flecks will start to seize up, right? Because butter melts at room temperature. So you don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna let my eggs were at room temperature. The cream and everything was just sitting at room temperature, just enough to where it took the chill off so it's not gonna seize up everything. This is all the mixing it is. You ready for this? Chef, we do have a question. Yes. Going back to the pumpkin cheesecake. Yes. If you didn't have caster sugar, would it be equal amounts of granulated sugar? 
So great question. Use, you could use about a cup of regular sugar or, I mean, you can do cup for cup, it's totally fine. It's, it's gonna be sweet either way, but if you were trying to err on less sweet, you could always just use a, uh, no, sorry, reverse that. That's what it's supposed to be, sorry. My, mind, my mind's catching up with what my <laughs> mouth is saying now. Now we're in sync. All right, so what's, you'd wanna use a, you could use the exact same amount and you should be totally fine. Um, I know that seems weird, but if you were doing it the opposite way and you were gonna add caster sugar to something you were using granulated sugar to, you would need to probably add a little bit uh, less of the actual sugar. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, the way it came out? I think so, yeah. It may not have. If it didn't make sense, please, please, I'll, I, will, I, can, I can clarify further. <laughs> um, you should be able to go same, same for same. I just like it because the caster sugar will, I mean, it just, it immediately kind of will blend faster and it works way better. I'm telling you, make cookies with regular sugar and then make them with caster sugar and you'll be amazed at how fluffy the cookies will come out because they cream a lot faster. All right, there's the Bix. That's the banana bread, this is it. Full stop, here we go. Pans, now I'm using my K&T pans. I do wanna show you this because my friend Katie, uh, who's gonna get two cheesecakes to take home because she's a big cheesecake fan along with uh, Jen, uh, showed me this right here is a, I almost flipped it over to look at the bottom. That'd have been a bad idea. Uh, this little, this cute little bread pan, microwave safe, oven safe to 400 degrees, and also dishwasher safe. Um, Oh, get out of town. Oh, it man. I didn't even try at rehearsal because I was so scared. Look at those beautiful little, the little ridges it has on the side. That's our banana bread I made earlier. Don't break it. Don't break it. All right, there you go. This thing is also available right now. There's so many great uh, items in, your, uh, in our, your local GM section for H-E-B. If you don't have a GM section for local H-E-B, go to, you know, maybe venture into another store, uh, especially during the holiday season. There's so much great stuff. And our GM uh, folks here at H-E-B do a fantastic job with everything that they uh, put in store, especially during the holidays. All right, a little nonstick spray Tompkins, and the batter. Yes. A little, uh, before you pour that, yes. um, banana bread's usually better when bananas are in it. Who says that? <laughs> you know what's funny, Jen? <laughs> is I literally in my head was like, I have these four bananas sitting there. Should I just pretend nobody sees it? And I'll just pour them in there and be like, look over there. Uh, yes, so banana bread is better with bananas in it. Jen. <laughs> that's why you're here. So to make banana bread and not just cinnamon bread, that's cinnamon buttermilk bread, uh, this is also delicious, by the way, but we are making our brown sugar banana bread. <laughs> All right, what's gonna happen is the bananas. Now you can, if you, so Jen, you're a fan of bananas. For people that are not a fan of bananas, if it's a, usually it's a textural thing, I find. Does anybody feel that way? Like if usually you don't like bananas because you don't like the texture, it's kind of like mushrooms. Um, usually it's that, it just, it feels weird to eat it. That was a great call out, Jim. I almost made banana bread for the holidays without banana bread. <laughs> so close. Go, I wouldn't Tompkins. have let you do that. Don't worry, Tompkins. I <laughs> Never got let back. me live it down. There you go. She's got, she's got <laughs> something on me now. All right. So uh, I don't mind if I'm going to eat bananas. I'll let them go a little. We talk about ripeness. Um, also, did you know if you are uh, going to curbside this, if one of our, uh, our fantastic curbside partners can pick you out bananas, you can actually pick on the website if you want them a little more ripe or a little more green they can help you and you can check which one you want so you get the right bananas for you. Now, I have a couple different ones. I wanna show you, as you see this, Rob, I don't know if you can see this. We have uh, bananas that are, you could totally use these. A little bit, of, little bit of brown on there, a little bit of color on them. Those are totally fine to use. Uh, these are also getting there, but they're not quite pulling away yet. You know they're ready for banana bread when you lift up and they completely just pull off the stem. These are like little sweetness, and you can actually go a little bit longer, but that's where I know that, hey, these bananas are ready. And it's also like, if you like fresh, I like the green bananas. I know, that I'm, I know I'm weird that way, and that's weird. Nope, can't do it. I like very, it. very, very green bananas, like very starchy, almost like the plantains. Um, I'm gonna chop these up because in this banana bread, I actually want it to be a little more coarse so that actually when I'm eating the banana bread, somebody will go, oh, I got a little piece of banana in there. Unless you don't like bananas. And if you're trying to hide it, or if you just don't like the texture, then you can always puree these in a food processor and do it that way. I told you we got ambitious. It should have been cheesecake full stop, but I went, we went with it. We're still going. I still got to make a sticky toffee pecan pie. I'm actually really excited to show you that one. All right, this is good. I'm going to fold this in here, but not with my slippery banana hand, that's for sure. All right, let me tie my hand off here. Again, pureeing this together, you could actually add your, uh, your sugar and your bananas and your uh, pumpkin pie spice or your cinnamon 
apple pie spice if you wanted to, you could even put your cinnamon all together and you can buzz all that so it's all like nice and coated. All right, now we're gonna fold this all together here. Here we go, there we go. Happy Jen. There we go, much better. better. Thank you, Tompkins. You're like, my favorite banana bread just became my <laughs> not favorite uh, buttermilk uh, cinnamon bread, which also delicious. Also would have been good though, I bet. <laughs> All right, folded that together, that's ready to go. Here we go, two pans, already sprayed, ready to go. My oven, your oven should be preheated 350 degrees. I'm just gonna kind of separate this into two separate batches. I'm gonna show you my trick here to get that line on the top of your banana bread you see right down there. This will fill pretty much two standard loaf pans. My hand is so slippery, you have no idea. I'm trying really hard not to drop this on the floor so it'll stay, although that makes for good TV. But we'll do with the blender later and that'll also make for good TV and see if it explodes on us. So, All right, chef. so a little bit of this, yes. Does the brown bag method work to ripen bananas? Is that your favorite method of ripening yeah, bananas? You can also put something like an orange in the bag or something like that that gives off, there's certain, there's certain fruits that give off a little more gas. You can always do that. Uh, the bag is, is really, really good if you wanna do that. I just try to get them, get them in advance. And if you need to, you can always, you can roast them. If you wanna make them a little bit softer, you can throw them in the roaster. I would roast bananas let me stop, because I know everybody's like, I'm gonna roast my bananas. If they're super duper green, don't roast them, because that just may get weird. If they're kind of like, you need them a little more, if they're kind of yellow, full yellow, and you wanna get a little more, you can always roast them to kind of caramelize some of the natural sugars. You could always cheat and do that. That's one way to go. Um, but throw them in a bag, it will. Just throw them in a bag and kind of let them, let them sit for a day or so. It'll kind of help speed that up, kind of like avocados. All right, you see my, all right, can you see that, Rob? We have two pans, equal amounts, brown sugar, banana bread, not just brown sugar bread. Take your spatula to make a little line. You're gonna go about, you know, quarter of the way down, straight up. Don't, don't go back, just straight down, quarter of the way, right back up. And then just drop the rest of that off on there. This goes in the oven. What that's gonna do is that is going to create a little bit of a pocket. Do I have another sheet pan? Yes, I do. Actually, you know what? I don't need a sheet pan. I'm just gonna run the oven. I don't think they'll be in danger of falling out. All right, into a 350 degree oven, they'll go in there. Now these should be done by the time we are, or they'll be pretty close to being done. I'm setting a timer, Jen, okay. 30 minutes. And now I have molasses on my watch. That's all right, it'll be nice and sticky. All right, cheesecake, that's in the oven. Cheesecake, all you gotta do now, add the eggs and vanilla extract. One at a time, we're gonna add our eggs here. And you wanna give it time to kind of blend up. Can you still see it, am I in the way? My fat hand in the way? And I'm gonna go a little bit faster here. I love making cheesecake. Also, Brown. Tompkins, I don't remember if you added that yet, but the sea salt is in this recipe as well. Yes, I added sea salt. It was okay. in with the sugar and the pumpkin pie spice. And I know I added the pumpkin in there. I saw that first. <laughs> I don't want to redo it out of it. That would have been bad news. All right, I'm going to strike this out of the way here. That's going to finish mixing, and I'm going to get my pie tins, and I'm going to show you. So, okay, full disclosure. Don't anybody get mad. I know you're gonna see these little tins here and you're gonna be like, really Scott, you couldn't spring and make a pie crust from scratch? You can, but you gotta, during the holidays, you gotta give yourself a little grace where you can. You can see this one got a little manhandled. That was probably me taking the lid off that one. Uh, this makes two nine ounce pie shells. These are the bigger ones, the nine ounce. Two nine ounce. Why would I make you so much cheesecake? This is the reason why. Number one, I care about you, number one. Number two, if you have like an Uncle Louie that comes to Thanksgiving every year and he has a piece of pie and you have, you have one of these that you've got and we just have one pumpkin cheesecake and Louie takes, you know, 11 twelfths of the pie and he goes, this is my one piece, I'll be back. And you're like, well, wait, nobody else got a piece of pie. Well, it's okay because if I made it in this shell, I still have one remaining and he comes back and goes, oh, you got extra. Great, I'll take the whole pie and I'll let you guys divvy up the last one. Well. If your guests eat all these, you wanna have one more, it's the holidays. We talked about stretchy pants, wanna get you conditioned and ready to go, so I'm making you more. Plus, I wanna be able to, the spirit of giving, if you have two of these guys, which is what I'm gonna to use tonight, you wanna be able to have one that you can give as a gift because once it sets up, it's gold. It'll, be, it'll last three or four days, totally fine in the fridge, great thing to make ahead, but it's really kind of an easy thing to gift one, keep one, or gift them both and keep one. Or you have three there if you're using a smaller one, I think my math's right, right, Jen? Three times six is 18. That, that sounds right, right. yeah. We gotta watch out. <laughs> Forgot the bananas and the banana bread. You never know what's gonna happen tonight. <laughs> now I gotta double check your work, Tompkins. <laughs> you too. All right, our cheesecake is done. That is it, that's all we're gonna do. So here's how we're gonna divvy this up between the two shells here. Now, really, really, really important for you to know that the way to bake cheesecake, the way I do cheesecake is normally, you're gonna all see all kinds of recipes that always say like bake in a water bath. So. 
in a water bath. I'm going to explain what that is, and I'm going to give you a little hack on this. So look how creamy that is. Look at that. Boom. Look at how, so this is where I'm going to plug the fresh pumpkin. If you're a, if you're a big, like, want to go big from scratch, you can see those flecks of the fresh pumpkin actually in this, those little fibers. From you know for a fact that this will uh, have a little different flavor than the canned pumpkin because we roasted it, right? So we got a little of that caramelization on the pumpkin. All right, you saw it burn, I burned the pumpkin, let's be <laughs> honest. All right, so look at that. Did I do, did I do, we do well? Which is up Looks good, is it Come even? On. I don't know. I, <laughs> make sure, make sure. All right, I think that's even enough. How about this? All right, so. Very important, we have to make a pepita toffee crumble. It's not going on now, that's for afterward. And you can absolutely, well that didn't work, did it? <laughs> Just smear them on there. Uh, you can absolutely omit the pepita toffee crumble. What is the pepita toffee crumble and why do we have it? So for me, food is all about texture, right? So I'm gonna kind of, you see how I just shimmy this and it's all out to the rim here, that's all we're gonna do. Just kind of give a little shimmy, just spread it out, those are ready to go. The pepita toffee crumble is meant to go on afterward because it's gonna give us some salt. So what's in the pepita toffee crumble is our HEB roasted, salted, sun, not sunflower, pumpkin seeds or pepita seeds, and then a little bit more of our toffee pieces. So those just little bits of brickle, those heat toffee pieces, blitzed up until you've got a nice fine crumb like this, and that goes over the top as soon as it comes out of the oven. So it can kind of settle in as it cools, and you've got this beautiful crust. Again, you can totally omit that. I love the texture of having the little toffee with that kind of flavor of the pumpkin pie, it's really, really good. So the water bath. So I would hate for you to, if I had a big enough, if I had a sheet tray, like you see most people do, you put the pumpkin pie or the pumpkin cheesecake or whatever the cheesecake is inside that little pot and then you fill it up with water. You've seen chefs do that and it's like, okay, so now I have to balance a cheesecake and this big <laughs> water. And if you're alone, like what? Like well, that's not gonna work. So and you have to open the door. Do yourself a, and you gotta open the door. <laughs> do yourself a favor, start with, this fantastic K&T borosilicate oven safe dish, fill it with water. While the oven is cold, fill it with water. Walk over here, oven down, you're not letting it heat out. We haven't heated it up yet. Bottom rack of the oven, the water bath. Close the oven, turn it on 300 degrees. We're gonna go low and slow so we don't break this and have it burning and screaming and cracking all over us. 300 degrees, that'll allow the water time to kind of, the vapor to kind of come up. It'll come up to temp at 300 degrees. It creates some steam and it'll create a much better environment. And all you gotta do is just put these guys in the oven. Really, really easy. All right, here we it's go. It's such a good hack. I can't tell you how many times I've ended up with like a oh soggy gosh. cheesecake. Like who in the world, <laughs> like, right? Like how are you, like you're trying to carry this over there with all the water. And then my, my favorite thing is, especially like, it's the main thing with creme brulee. If you ever made creme brulee, don't put them in a pan with all the water. It's, it's like, it's so hard because you splash and all of a sudden you got water in the pie. You're like, well, now that's, that's not what I wanted. So you put the pan underneath, you're still gonna get the same steam and it's still gonna work just as good. All right, Jen, two down. We're almost there. Three to go, three to, three to, whew, three to go. All right, so um, these guys I'll save here. Now the, I, I cannot wait to show you how easy this is. Number one, uh, I have two because we're going, if I was doing sticky toffee pecan pie, we're going all the way. So we're gonna do a pecan pie crust. So these are, we sell these at HEB. These are these diamond pecan pie. You'll see a little icon, you can click on that if you wanna buy it. Um, what I like about these is, is uh, they're already done. That's easy to do. And the fastest way to make pecan pie is like this. You don't need to try to go crazy heating anything up or do anything. I melt the butter and everything goes in the blender and the friction is gonna make the party. So I have some pecan pieces here. Uh, my other favorite crust, Jen, uh, for pecan pie. So it's about six ounces of pecan pieces. So I'm gonna need a little bit more than, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna do a little more. Uh, my favorite, what was I saying? Where was I? Pecan, favorite thing a, about pecan pie? My favorite other crust for pecan pie, thank you. I got so locked into like, how much, how much should I do? How much <laughs> do I wanna do? Um, I love to do a sugar cookie crust for pecan pie. I love to have that. This is kind of like, because we're doing pecan pie, we're just going all in, so it's pecan in the crust, pecans inside, pecans everywhere. Um, I also am not a big fan of uh, dark corn syrup. I like what corn syrup does, don't get me wrong, I like what corn syrup does to products and you really need to have it in certain things. Um, but I just don't like the dark corn syrup. And so in order to make this a sticky toffee pecan pie, we're actually gonna use date syrup. So I'm gonna use date syrup. Now you won't find this, oh, here we go, bam. You won't find this at every HB, but you can find it. You can most likely find it online as well. Um, and you can get that date syrup. Now you can use equal amounts of the corn syrup, the dark corn syrup, but I think if you try it this way, 
the flavor of this is amazing because you really get that the date syrup really lends itself to like having a much more kind of mahogany. It's hard to describe, but you know what I mean? Like it has a really beautiful flavor. Um, my butter's melted. Look at that, Jen. We were Nicely on it. Nicely done. Movie magic nice. there. Um, okay, so here's where we're going to go. So this is almost done. I'm, I, I'm not even kidding you. I want to show you this is how easy. When I try to bake, I try to bake everything as absolutely easy as possible. All I have to do is pour in our filling here. So in my, in my blender, brown sugar, maple syrup, Butter, what? I'm not gonna add it slowly? Nope, everything goes in. And then the eggs and the vanilla extract, everything goes in. Did you see that splash? I did. That was epic. It was like, it was like way, way over there. Look, luckily I'm not using that stuff anymore. All right, and then I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. Gotta have a pinch of salt. We have, you're using unsalted pecans. So we wanna make sure we have enough salt to kind of bring out the flavor in this. And we're gonna go blender, date syrup. The date syrup being the most important part, so look how thick this stuff is. Oh yeah. The date syrup, and again, in place of corn syrup, this is just gonna give it a really, really, this is what the pie is all about right here. Just that another, another nuance of flavor. It's just really creative, and honestly, and I'm, I'm not gonna make any health claims, but I mean, I feel like date syrup, Jen, has to be a little bit better for you than I dark mean, corn syrup. I mean, it sounds better, I mean, it, sure. yeah, it's like, you know, it's at least a little more natural, <laughs> so I don't know. Um, but I do love the flavor of a, I'm a, I was a late adopter of dates. I was never a big date fan, which stinks because we lived in California. We had a lady who lived above us who actually was a date, her dad was a date farmer and like they would give us dates all the time. I'm like, oh, these are the, what's this is the worst fruit ever. But I've come to learn, I was like, I actually really do like the, do do the organic Medijul dates and I just, my brain snapped on late. I'm a late adopter, but I love dates now. Um, if you've never watched this show before, you're probably wondering why do I have a blender with all this stuff in here with no top on it. Well, because number one, we like to take risks. This is what it's all about. And Rob and I so far have been lucky that nothing, we haven't had to buy a new overhead cam due to a blender explosion. Today may be different. There's a lot of sticky ingredients. So we're gonna blend this up before your very eyes. This gets blended so you can see it's very dark. As soon as it starts turning a light color, it's gonna get a little bit of air. It's ready to pour into our pans. We're gonna go low speed. Before I start this, I want to just say uh, I don't recommend doing this at home for yourself. If you have a top to the blender, Jen, put it on there. Tompkins to loves hero. living on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do this not with a, I don't have a big Vitamix, fancy Vitamix like this at home. I use a little $12 Oster blender, which is just enough to make this as good as this one does. So don't worry about it. If you don't have a fancy blender, I promise you, my little Oster blender does it just as good as this one. It just doesn't have the same speed, and I use the top. Oh, here we go. So watch the color, you ready? The first time I've been nervous. So see how it starts to turn a little bit of a lighter color? We're just gonna let the air, everything's gonna get all blended up. Eggs are gonna start to emulsify. There it is. Man, what a pretty vortex. Right? <laughs> Jen, that was for you. Thank you. All for you. All right, this is, this, is, this is the, so if you're watching at home, that took what, five minutes? If that, pour your mixture in over the pecan pieces. And again, as little or as much as you want, evenly. That one's probably got a little too much, a little more this guy, and that is it. That's literally, that's the dish right there. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, that is that. Again, a little swirl here just to kind of even everything out. Swirl it around. I bet you had no idea that making pecan pie could be that easy. Again, sugar cookie crust, if you want to do your own, always a good way to go. Always, and a regular pie crust is also really good. All right, these are going to go in the oven. Holy cow, look at our banana bread. What? I don't know if you can see it. We'll see it later. Later. We'll wait. All right, we made a sticky toffee pecan pie, right? So I'm going to move over here. Uh, we are going to make some great whipped creams or sauces to go along with our dishes. Did I miss anything, Jen? I made uh, everything that was supposed to go nope. with that one? All right. You're good to go, yeah. I'm telling you, man. Gotta watch out. Watch out. All right. We are going to make a chai whipped cream. So how do you make a chai whipped cream? Well, we are going to do a little thing called a, a cold extraction, if you will. So we are going to take some chai premium black tea bag. You're going to be like, no, that's not how you're going to do it. Seriously, this is how we're going to do this. So the black tea bags are going to steep in heavy cream. 
and over time, and the recipe calls for about four hours, but if you want to do it in less time, here's the hint. So you can either do what's called a cold extraction, which I'm going to show you, or you can do a hot extraction. So if, uh, if you go to any fancy ice cream shop um, and they're going to make like a certain kind of ice cream, I know in San Francisco they make this uh, prosciutto ice cream, and the way they make that is they take the leftover salted prosciutto bone and they steep it in cream. Oh, we lost a pie. Oh, no. I didn't touch it, Katie. I promise I didn't touch it. <laughs> Uh, they steep it in the cream, and so through warm extraction, through heating it up, they're basically kind of extracting a lot of that salt and a lot of that bone flavor into the milk or cream mixture, and then they, they make ice cream with that, and the amount of flavor that comes through is amazing. So we're doing the same thing. We're going to do it cold. Now, if you want to use this same day, if you're like, okay, I don't want to wait the four hours, you can do this through hot extraction. It works a little bit faster. Um, I just happen to like the cold extraction because sometimes, this is my one, my one warning, Sometimes hot extraction can extract too much, and then what should be like a very faint, very clean flavor of chai can be like a, oh, that hits you right in the back of the throat and in the face. Uh, so you just gotta be careful with that. So if you're gonna heat it up, my recommendation is for a hot extraction, heat your cream, your heavy cream, on a stove with a pinch of salt to about 150 degrees. So 150 to 160 is where you're starting to see steam, and it may just be starting to bubble, cut the heat. And then pour that over the tea bags, throw it in the fridge and let it sit, for like, just until it cools down, and then take the tea bags out, and then let the cream sit in the fridge for at least an, an hour. And then by that time, it'll have time to cold extract. But I like the cold extract better, because again, it's a little more subtle. So when I serve this with a, there's a lot of big, bold flavors in the pecan pie. I don't want it to be like too in your face. All right, we're gonna whip some whipped cream, Jen. Yeah. So uh, my, best, my best culinary advice I can give you when whipping cream by hand is freeze your bowl. <laughs> and your attachment. <laughs> I forgot to freeze my whisk. You're gonna watch me work tonight. All right, <laughs> we're gonna move this back here. So a cold bowl helps to, uh, to just form all those, just helps it grab all that stuff a little bit better. So I've got ice cold bowl, ice cold whisk for my whipped cream, because I'm gonna make the chocolate malted whipped cream at the same time here. Um, and I'm gonna see which one goes faster. Now, my other tip is if you wanna make really, really, really good whipped cream in a stand mixer or with a hand mixer, do it slower. I know it seems weird. You're like, no, no you got to whip it fast so it gets the air in there. I promise you, if you do it a little bit slower, on like a, I do mine at like a speed four, you will, it will still puff up as good as you did if you were on 10, but it just allows it to do a little slower, which means we're going to kind of trap a little more air in it, a little slower, and it'll help save the emulsion, and it'll hold a little bit better for a little bit longer. Now, it may, you may be totally fine. If you want to kick it up to 10, I'm often an offender of going, hey, all the 10, whip it up, get it, get it thick. But honestly, I feel like it tastes a little better when you do it a little bit slower. So I'm gonna do it by hand, and we're gonna let the machine do one on four. We're gonna see who wins. All right, here we go. So I have my, any questions so far? Uh, no, but uh, if you wanna place your bets on who's gonna win, is it the, the machine yeah. or is um, it Tompkins? Make yeah, sure gonna, you stretch. I'll sweeten the pot. You ready for this? <laughs> Jen will donate <laughs> three nights of cooking for you <laughs> if I win. And if I lose, she'll also do that, but she'll do five <laughs> nights. All right. And I'll let you, Jen, handle the details in the chat. Okay. Yeah, that'll be perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for volunteering that. You're such a Thanks, star, Tompkins. man. Thanks, Tompkins, yeah. I'm telling you. Happy All right, so in here I've got my uh, cocoa powder and, again, the malted, or the malted milk powder. Now, I did get malted chocolate milk. So if you wanted to use this, I'm also a big, big fan of this. Instead of using the three tablespoons of the cocoa powder and a tablespoon of the malted milk powder, you could do four tablespoons of this. Just know this has added sugar. So use this before you sweeten the other whipped cream if you're gonna go all malted chocolate milk powder because it does have a good amount of sugar. So just add that and then sweeten as you need to with your powdered sugar. All right, so powdered sugar is right here. All it's gonna get is a pinch of salt. And I, uh, I don't know how, but I lost my vanilla bean paste. I think somebody may have taken it. Vanilla bean paste is a coveted thing around our kitchen. So somebody may have been like, ooh, vanilla bean paste. I'm gonna use a little vanilla extract. For this, we gotta have a little flavor to again counterbalance that chocolate using the straight cocoa powder. They make these like, I can't get it open. Jen, I'm gonna. <laughs> Come on. I need to tap out. Tap out! We got <laughs> hundreds of people watching here, Tom Kiss. Wait. Waiting on All you. Right, I guess this will be enough in here. <laughs> All right. About a, that's about a teaspoon. I'd go a little heavier. I'm a big vanilla fan. Charlotte would tell you, of course she would, Tom Kiss. Of course she'd go heavier on that. That and the garlic, I tend to go a little heavier on. All right. My whipped cream. So my cream is gonna be uh, two and a half cups. Heavy whipping cream, the heaviest whipping cream you have, into the bowl here. All right, this is gonna be a lot of fun. 
So the chai chantilly, I'm going to put, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to, don't get, don't start taking bets yet. Jen, you're not on the hook yet. Oh, okay. I'm just blending, blending some ingredients here. I'm blending, and then I'm going to do the full whip in a second. All right, that's the state I'm going to stop at. I'm going to add a little powdered sugar, and then I'm going to do the same thing to this one over here. I don't know, Tompkins. I would count that as cheating. I mean, I'm, I feel okay. like you're cheating. I'll stir this one as well. We'll start there. How about that? All right. <laughs> This one is right here. That's my, uh, that's my chocolate, my malted chocolate whipped cream. This is the chai. This is about a, so I, I, made a, I make a little more of this when I can. This is the uh, tea bags. I did a double batch of this because I really wanted to make sure that uh, my new towel, I gotta wipe my hands on my new towel, look at that. Also H-E-B find, you can get that online or in stores. All right, the tea bags. I need a sifter, which I have over here with a bowl. So here's how you're going to do this. So this has been sitting in there for a little over four hours. You pour it through a little fine mesh sieve here. I don't know if Rob, you can see that. I'll move my whipped cream out of the way. So then you'll take your spatula, of which I have another one, and you're going to, this is where all that extra flavor is, is in the tea bag. So you're just going to s gently press any of the extra stuff out of the tea bag, and you'll see a little bit of the darker color kind of on top, which is totally, exactly what you want. You can also see as I'm kind of mashing this a little bit, just gently, you don't want it to completely rupture the bags. Um, just kind of mashing it, you're gonna see a little bit of that kind of change color because that's the cream kind of grabbing all that extra spice stuff as it's kind of getting squished out. So you see all that? See all that little bit of that brown in there? Brown color, that's what all that extra extract is and that's enough for us to get the flavor that I want out of this without being like, I mean, I'm telling you like, if you were to chew on a chai tea bag, you'd be like, it'd be terrible. So you don't want to do that. This goes in our, uh, our mixer here. And because Jen wanted me to, pinch of salt, always a pinch of salt to my whipped cream. Even if you think you don't need it, add a pinch of salt because it'll bring out all the flavors just that much more. So chef, going back to One the more. sticky toffee pecan pie and yes. the crust, you doubled down with the pecan crust, right? I doubled down, But Two pecan if, crust. If you wanted to use a sugar cookie crust, would you pre-bake that? Yes, you could, yes, you could pre, actually no, for pecan pie, it needs a long time to cook. Well, you could do it with other things, like with, with certain fruit pies that's set, you could kind of part cook it, but I would definitely, um, for, to help seal your sugar cookie, because obviously it's a, uh, it's got a, it's a chemically leavened uh, product, brush the interior of your uh, cookie dough with egg. So like just some, whisk some eggs together and brush that. That's gonna help create a little barrier so that when you pour your filling in, it's not completely gonna just rupture, it'll kind of help seal it, and then freeze it before you bake it. That's my other big thing with any time you do like a crust like that, is freeze it before with the egg wash on it, pour the filling in, put it right in the oven, and that way it'll give it time to kind of come up to temp, and it'll kind of seal it a little bit better versus doing like a hot cookie crust with that stuff, it'll, it might tear on you. So that's the best way to do it. Right, here's, your, here's your mix. I'm gonna give you one, two. What? Better be a quick one. It's close, okay. it's close. All right, there we go, all right, here we go. What are we saying? What are we, what are we gonna, what are we, what is Jen gonna, gonna give us? Well, you kindly offered yes. <laughs> my time up, which thanks for that. Uh, three nights, I think. It's so worth it, yeah. <laughs> and if the, if this one wins, it's five nights. It's like, the, it's like <laughs> the fastest five, five ever. All anyway. right, so when you're whipping whipped cream by hand, uh, you know, it can get, it can get a task in a hurry. You can get really, uh, really, really tired. So you don't want to be like, rah, rah, with all your, like, all your brute strength. It's just a wrist action. Save your arm. Just be, you're just kind of moving your wrist around. I promise you, this is on a four. I'm not gonna move it. This is just, just wrist action. And when it starts to get a little more set, you can, you can kind of like, you know, then you can kind of go a little more crazy to kind of get it whipped. But you just need a little, a little action with the wrist here. And if you wanted to, typically they would always tell us to make figure eights with it. But at some point, like when you're looking at something that's like patting your head, rubbing your stomach, it's like you start to kind of make L's and nines and fours and you're like, what was I doing? So just whisk it up, both together here. Again, I've got a good amount of powdered sugar. Powdered sugar has cornstarch, which will also kind of, you know, help to kind of set our emulsion. Now, yes, cornstarch does need to be heat activated in order for it to set, but it does help in the sugar to kind of help set a little bit. Did you stretch, is, Tompkins? Did I what? Did you stretch? I don't no. want you to pull a muscle. Where were you on that one, Dan? Oh. Could have used you. It's my, supposed to be my, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta give me the, 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 give me the goods here. All right, so we're gonna do this. Did I put a pinch of salt in this? You did. That's why Jen's here. That's why she's in charge of things we can't tell you about. Exactly why. She watches everything. T 
top secret organization. Janet, the grilling open, you said you had, uh, uh, you said your phrase was donuts make me go nuts? <laughs> donuts do make me go nuts. I can't believe you remembered. <laughs> so far, Jen, you're not looking at five nights. Look at this. Look at mine's know. already thicker Let's, than that one. Look at this. What are we looking at? Let's All see. All right. So I want to tell you, I want to say this really, really quickly. So at some point, if you want to make a, and I'm going to let this go in because I'm, I'm, I have full faith. Uh, if you want to save this, you can make a sauce out of this by just whipping it until it starts to get thick, until it's at the ribbon stage. And I'm going to show you what that looks like, the ribbon stage. So you could use this over your ice cream, other things. If you don't want to make whipped cream out of it, you can turn whipped cream into like a sauce. Same thing with this one. You could turn the chai chantilly into a sauce by just whipping it to the point where it has the ribbon stage. I'm telling you, the, gold, the cold bowl, though, is still really cold in the bottom. The cold bowl absolutely helps in this. So let's see, when I pull it out, you see how I can draw a figure eight? Did you see that? I'm going to do it again. Oh. Big figure eight. My handwriting's not the greatest. <laughs> Looked more like a nine. It looked like a kind of a, an eight that doesn't, somebody that didn't know how to form eights, maybe. <laughs> also guilty. So this is our ribbon stage. So if we wanted to, I just want to show you, this would be really kind of cool too, like on our plate, is to be able to kind of have a little sauce here. So we could do a little bit of our, so see how it's nice and thick? And then we could kind of do one of these. Oof. Make a nice little, little sauce. It's like the best part of having ice cream, like the melty part at the end. It, it, it literally, it tastes like, if you, I'm gonna describe, think in your mind when I'm describing this and it's gonna take you to it. You have a vanilla milkshake that you added the chocolate syrup to and the malted milk powder and it has all that sugar and it's all that stuff and you let it melt and you go back to take a sip, that's what the flavor of this is. It's like, but still cold, not like gross, like sitting out in the sun, not like that. <laughs> People are like, gross, why would I want to do that? No, no, no. This is like still cold and good, but just had some time to kind of become like a, uh, oh, look at this. You see this? So what I say, it was on, we're on low speed, right? We're on a four here. Look what it's doing. Still whipping up nicely. Jen, I saved you. Who's the oh, lucky boy. winner, Jen? Whose house are you going to cook for? <laughs> I'd have her come December 24th, 25th, <laughs> and 26th if it were me, but that's just me. Am I allowed to have like blackout dates or just any No blackout day? dates. What oh, do you think this man. is? Capital One? No. We're going, this is, this is, there's no blackout dates on this. All right. Can you see this now? This is our, so we have a, this is, I would call this probably more medium. Almost going toward, going toward stiff peaks. You want stiff? You want all the way? Let's go all the way. Here we go. So this is not taking very much time, right? All right. This is good to go. That's our. Beautiful dark chocolate. This little sauce, really, really good. I'll plate up a piece of a uh, pie on that. So again, I'm not going to touch this as much as I want to crank it up right now. It's so much, it pains me. We need to taste this because I want to make sure that we, uh, if we need to add any more sugar to it, we can. But see, this is also, oh my gosh, it's so good. It does need more sugar. I'm telling you, that chai, it comes through and it's real subtle. But man, it's so good. So good on pecan pie. All right. Where's that, four? I'm not saying it's not a contender still, because it still could be, Jen. Yeah. You could still win over here. I don't know. But the salt comes through really, really well. OK. There's my whisk. Here's this. I'm going to wipe this off. All right, you ready to plate? Let's do this. The chai chantilly still going. Here we go. All right. Earlier, I believe I said, oh, we talk about flavored whipped creams. We just made two right before your very eyes. Really, really simple. The same way that we are making the chai chantilly. I'm gonna give you one of my favorite, most favorite dessert whipped creams. And I'm not a big espresso guy. Espresso? Espresso. Espresso guy. Take third cup of toasted espresso beans, like just really good oily espresso beans. Put them in two cups of heavy cream. Put a lid on a container. Give it a little shake. Set it in the fridge overnight. Strain out the beans. Whip the whipped cream with a pinch of salt and powdered sugar. It will change your life. And if you're having any kind of chocolate pie or anything like that for the holidays, it will amp it up to a level that's not even known. It's amazing. And it's so, so good. The uh, espresso whipped cream. I think we have a recipe on hb.com. I think I wrote one, espresso chantilly. Isn't that, espresso. How you, is that how you made the um, swoon coffee ice cream? Exactly. That's exactly how we did it. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm assuming. I'm, just gonna, I'm, just <laughs> I'm pretty go sure that's yes. how you did it. This is our chai chantilly. 
That was on a four speed. You, if you think you're like, ah, oh, it'll never whip, I need to crank the speed up, I'm telling you, it will work and it will taste better. It stays a little more emulsified. All right, I have both whipped creams. I have everything I need. Let's clear a little space here. Boy, who made a mess up here? <laughs> All right, my pie. So I'm gonna show you the, uh, we talked about jiggle and, jiggle and wiggle when it comes to pies. When it comes to a, a pumpkin pie, there is a, uh, I, can't really, I don't know if you can see this, Rob. I'll do the jiggle wiggle right up here. We'll do it right up top. Here we go. All right, this is my uh, pumpkin pie that sat in there. This is fresh out of the oven. And I'm gonna tell you, so how do you know when your, when your pumpkin cheesecake is done, or cheesecake in general? Um, you can't really tell by touching the top, and you definitely don't wanna put a toothpick in it because it doesn't always pull back clean. And so you don't wanna say like, oh, if it's still sticking to the toothpick, well, that may not be it. It could be overcooked by the time you do get a right thermometer on it. So the way I like to do it is, you have a wiggle and a jiggle. So a wiggle, a wiggle was what I call wet. So wet, so it's basically when you tap it in the oven, it'll go whoa, 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 and it'll kind of keep going. Now when you do a jiggle, a jiggle's different. A jiggle is you tap it, and you see it's very subtle. It's a little more than a jiggle. You jiggle it, it goes, what's up? It kind of comes back and sets. It kind of does a little stop. Does that make sense? My design, so I just do it this way. It's like, there you go, we need the like side a, profile. It's kind of like a whoa, like it's kind of like, but it stops. <laughs> like a jiggle will kind of move and it will stop Whereas if it wiggles, it's just gonna keep kind of going. That's too wet, leave it back in your oven. Now everybody's ovens are different. A lot of ovens have hot spots. So you can see on mine, I don't know if you can see this, this one cracked a little more and it's a little more burned on that side because this oven is notorious for hot spot. Even though I went with a water bath, it still didn't matter because that oven has a hot spot. But they still look great and as these cool, that crack will kind of fill a little bit as it kind of like, you know, as everything kind of, you know, decreases and kind of rests, it'll kind of go, but this is perfect. Moves out, oh, it's hot, yes it's hot, this one, move it. Ooh. And right. just so uh, for our viewers, jiggle and wiggle are both jiggle and wiggle. technical Those are terms. Two Is that technical culinary terms? Yeah, exactly okay. right. So when you're <laughs> in there, you can say, no, 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 I don't want the wiggle. You got to have the jiggle only. It's got to be able to like it kind of stops. So it's like one of these versus like whoa, just keeps going. There you go. Waterbed versus like just jumping on like one of those foam mattress kind of things. All right, pepita toffee crumble. Here's one of the ones that's done. Here's one of the ones you see here. That's my timer going off. Let's see our banana bread. You ready for this? Oh, oh, it's the best right, part. I promise you, I promise you. One banana bread, two banana breads, just that amount of time. Now, see, see what we did? We chopped our banana bread, right? So it's a little bit, you can see those beautiful pieces of banana in the actual banana bread. So these are gonna cool. Those need to cool for a little while, but those are well done. I'm not even gonna stick the, the uh, toothpick in that because I know they're done by looking at them. All right, here's my, Banana bread, ready to go. Now, when I make banana bread, pretty much nobody in my house will eat it. Eh, sometimes they will. If you make two loaves and you're like, what does he get? My daughter, she'll, she'll eat it, my daughter will eat it. Uh, if you go, ah, it's like, it's been three days, it's on the counter, nobody's gonna eat it, I'm just gonna throw it away. Don't throw it away. Because what this will make is the most heavenly French toast you've ever had. So cut it thick, once it's kind of like had some time to dry out, cut it thick and then slather it in your cream mix, what I like to do is I do equal amounts, eggs and cream, heavy cream that is for my base, because if I'm making French toast, we're going all in. So if I'm using a cup of heavy cream, use the same amount of volume of eggs and whip it up together or put in a blender, whip it so it's real creamy, add your maple syrup, sugar, sweetener, vanilla, you know, almond zest, whatever you want to put in there. Almond zest? No, almond. No, there you go. You'll get Let's it. Back that up. Uh. Here it is. Orange zest and then maybe a little almond extract if you wanted to. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. All right. This is ready to go. I'm gonna get my plates. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do the banana bread on the, uh, how about the little, the soft. Ooh, there you go. Malted chocolate whipped cream sauce. And Tompkins, when you get a second. Yes. Would you, would you show us the jiggle or the wiggle? Not you personally, but with the pie, so I can see it on the pie. Yes. You mean <laughs> these guys? I mean, as much as I love your little dance there. <laughs> So this has the, uh, you see how it's, I, I can move it and it's jiggling, but it's set. Can you see that? It's hard to see. There see we go. That? No, kind of, it's hard to see. I see the jiggle. <laughs> Rob's going, I see it. <laughs> I see it. All right, so it's kind of like, it moves, but it will set. It doesn't like kind of keep going. Again, you don't want this. Yeah. You want the, hey, stop, full stop. We'll stop with the jiggle, that's all you need. All yeah. right, 
Banana bread. I like it cut really nice and thick here. Now you can obviously add uh, any nuts to this that you would want. Um, oh, that just way to go, Scott. All right, here we go. It's so lovely. Uh, I made this last night, and this is actually really, really nice. It's still so moist inside. It's really, really perfect. All right, there's a couple slices of banana bread. That's ready to go. You know what I should have got? Like some kind of pie. You know what? Mm -hmm. When in Rome. All right, our pumpkin cheesecake with pepita toffee. Uh, we're going to give a Louis size piece here. Actually, that's not, that doesn't really do justice to Louis, I don't think. Let me grab a spoon here. Have an extra spoon. A plate. And then what kind of whipped cream on this one? You want to go with the chocolate or you want to go with a little sh uh, the chai chantilly? Um, I'm going to go with the, ch the chai chantilly, please. Chai chantilly herd. I feel like the spiciness of the chai would be so good. Can't wait. Oh, wah, wah. That's what you do with a spoon, Tompkins. If I had a real... <laughs> think I can't do it? Now I'm going to show you. Here we go. All right, so uh, the pecan pie, yeah, use a pie uh, extractor whenever possible so that you actually get the full amount of the actual pie versus a spoon, which is not the way to go. You could also can use the world's largest spatula. <laughs> when feeding a group, you know, feeding a group. All right, all right, this is weeping a bit. That's why that's, uh, that's looking like that. All right, here we go. A little uh, a canal of our uh, whipped cream here. All right, we're wrapping this up. This is how easy this is. How do you canal without a spoon? Just got to be creative with it here. Are you going to get fancy with it? Oh, you are. Look at you go. Not too fancy, but a little. Whoop. Here we go. All right. Big honking piece of the cheesecake with pizza topping and then the uh, of course the last thing which we have over here which I'm going to use our uh, chai chantilly again um, the best way to use this whipped cream I'm going to show you in just a second here there's our without the pepita on there and our piece of pecan pie I've been waiting for this mainly because it's been sitting so lovely on this pedestal for so long and I'm going to use a bigger knife here bigger than that one you say you better believe it So we use this to hack the bushes outside when they get a little uh, ornery. <laughs> and I'm going to use it on this beautiful pecan pie. <laughs> All right, this is going to come off of here. So I'm going to take it. We're going to go straight down. Pecan pie. Move that guy out of the way. Can you see in there? You see that? Boom. Oh, so All pretty. Right, we're going to give a big, big piece to Uncle Louie here. So Uncle Louie gets a quarter of the pie. I'm telling you, there's... there's <laughs> In every family, right, there's one that's like, what are you guys going to have? <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let me throw this back over here so you can kind of see the pecan pie. This is going to get a little, I'm going to do a little double action on this. So we'll do a little bit of that. You don't mind, right? A little bit of that. And then move these bananas out of the way. The last thing you'd really need to do is, is just put this into a bowl and let people just eat it plain because it literally tastes like melted ice and melted ice cream sundae. But that is it. That is it. Super simple. So many great things so fast. Uh, thank you, number one, for keeping up. Thank you for joining us. Thanks to those of you that are watching on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we hope to see more of you. Uh, don't forget everything you saw when you're watching Facebook tonight at Shoppable. You can simply click on the links and go to buy those items. If you want to know what's coming up, we are uh, about to crest a year here of these virtual classes. If you want to check out any of the content you may have missed, if you're just joining us, for the very first time, you can always go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash H-E-B, and check out all the last classes, all the great things that are coming up. We have a lot of great celebrity guests coming up in the future for the holidays. We've got some great hacks for you coming up for the holiday. If you're, if you're planning Christmas, Thanksgiving, all that stuff, Hanukkah, whatever holiday you're celebrating, we've got so many great things to show you and help you out with. You are not alone in your food adventures. We are here with you. H-E-B is here to help. Uh, Jen Oye, thank you so much. Of course. Jen thank Oye. you so much for having so me, loud. Tompkins. I had a blast. Uh, you're awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, for leading. Thank you so much for making sure the banana bread stayed <laughs> banana bread, my friend. Uh, and then uh, always, if you want to uh, check out what's coming up next, go to our website, hbcom slash classes. Check it out. If you missed out on last week's class, we had a great wine class. The week before that, we had Chef Eddie Jackson from Food Network here. 
cooking up the Texas Beef Council. A lot of great stuff. You just go to youtube.com slash HB to check it all out. Guys, thank you so much, and we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us.